Welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem, where we explore complex engineering problems and discuss different methods for solving them. In this video, I'll be breaking down a problem and discussing different ways to tackle it. However, keep in mind that there is no one correct path for some of these solutions, and I encourage you to share your own insights and thoughts in the comments. Together, we can learn and improve our problem-solving skills. So, sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into today's problem. Today we're working out of Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes, 3rd edition, and we're doing problem number 7.19. By viewer request, I'm jumping out of order here and doing problem number 7.19. I'll read the problem statement. Air is heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius prior to entering a combustion furnace. The change in specific enthalpy associated with this transition is 3,640 joules per mole. The flow rate of air at the heater outlet is 125 meters cubed per minute, and the air pressure at this point is 122 kilopascals absolute. Part A. Calculate the heat requirement in kilowatts, assuming ideal gas behavior and that kinetic and potential energy changes from the heater inlet to the outlet are negligible. Okay, so I've got a diagram here of what the question is asking. So we have air going into a preheater. We have a certain amount of energy, Q, going in that's, that's associated with this enthalpy change. And then we have an outlet here. Um, they gave us the volumetric flow rate at the outlet, the pressure, and the temperature. So they told us also to use the ideal gas law, which is pressure times volume equals moles times the gas constant times the temperature. And that's the absolute temperature, not um, Celsius. Celsius not, is not on an absolute scale. Okay, so for this first part, we need to know, if we're going to use this enthalpy change, we have to know a mass flow rate, right? Um, that's why moles is here at the bottom. Okay, so, so we need to calculate the molar flow rate, and we're going to get that by using the ideal gas equation of state. Okay, so the number of moles is equal to PV over RT, and we need to convert we need to have you know what R equals, we need to convert T into Kelvin, and we need to have our pressure here and make sure that's in Pascals so that the units all cancel out. Okay, so then we calculate our molar flow rate from all these values, and we get that we have a molar flow rate of 43.3 moles per minute. Okay, so how do we calculate our heat requirement? Well, our heat requirement is equal to our molar flow rate plus the change in enthalpy because the enthalpy is the amount of energy that it takes to change this enthalpy into this enthalpy. So, okay, so to show this a little bit better, we'll write down our energy equation. Delta H plus delta EK plus delta EP equals Q minus shaft work. Okay, well we don't have any shaft work and they told us to ignore these. So all we have is delta H equals Q. Okay, and in order to figure out what delta H is, we can break this up they gave us a delta H, but it was a specific enthalpy. And so in order to change the specific enthalpy into an uh, enthalpy that's a flow, the flow rate of enthalpy, um, that's what the little dot, that's what the little dot symbolizes, um, then we need to multiply it by the, uh, the molar flow rate. So then you get Q equals delta H times N. Okay? So that's where this equation came from. Okay? So then you multiply... Um, you know, what we just calculated here, and then you've got your, your specific enthalpy change, 
and then uh, convert minutes into seconds so that we can convert this energy into watts. So we get watts, and then we can convert that into kilowatts. Okay, now for part B. Part B says, would the value of the change in kinetic energy, which was neglected in part A, be positive or negative? Or would you need more information to be able to tell? If the latter, what additional information would be needed? Okay, so let's look at the equation for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass flow rate times the velocity squared. We know that in our system, there's no accumulation in this unit. Um, so the mass flow rate is constant. There's no generation and there's no accumulation. Everything that comes in has to go out. That's the, the mass is not created or destroyed, right? The law of conservation of mass. Okay, so the mass flow rate is fixed. So this value doesn't change. This value is constant. So the only thing that could change is the velocity of the stream. Okay, so how could the stream velocity change? Well, it could change if the cross-sectional area of the pipe changes from pipe one to pipe two. Um, the other thing that could change the stream velocity is if there's losses in kinetic energy due to friction in the system. So the, the gas flowing against um, the pipe walls um, and then also the gas um, rubbing against each other. Um, if you have a turbulent flow, then you're gonna have losses due to friction. Um, and so your gas will heat up just by nature of flowing through the pipe. And that energy comes from the kinetic energy and turns into heat energy. Okay, um, then also sometimes when you have process units, you'll have valves and tight spaces and things like that. So you'll have pressure drops and partly caused due to the same thing here due to friction. Um, and so you'll have pressure drops across process units very frequently. So we would need to know what the pressure drop was across this unit. Um, so we don't have enough information on this side, pressure, um, volumetric flow rate, or the pipe diameter in order to calculate what the, the velocity of the fluid is. Okay, so, so if, we, if we were able to calculate what this was for stream one and stream two, then we could see what the, the difference is. Okay, so if we needed to find out if it was positive or negative, you would say, okay, is, is the energy in stream two the kinetic energy in stream two less than or greater than the kinetic energy in stream one. Okay, so if, if stream two is more than stream one, then the change is positive. If the, if the energy in stream two is less than the energy in stream one, then the energy is negative. Okay, all right, well that is it for problem number 7.19. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful in your problem solving journey. Remember, there are other routes you can take to arrive at the same correct answer, and I encourage you to leave a comment with any additional insights or questions you may have. Also, if you have any specific engineering problems you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is valuable, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering problem-solving videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.